yes, today is gonna be just another one of those videos. And we have been doing this a lot recently. We're back in the Alpine Mountains. To be specific, we are in the west of the Alps, on the French side. And as I have already previously told you, there are a lot of interesting airports over there, definitely. And today we're going to visit just another one of those. In fact, I actually think this is one of the most dangerous airport in Europe. So hang on with me for a second. Let's actually zoom in here. And this is the runway. Actually, I made a post on my Instagram yesterday asking which airport this might be. And most of the people said it's Courchevel. And in fact, this does look like the airport of Courchevel. But no, this is another airport. And to be quite honest, I think this is even more extreme than Courchevel's airport. Actually, it does have a significantly shorter runway. Only few people got the answer right. Yeah, really, this airport is not that well known. Actually, there's not even like a Wikipedia article about it. There's not that much information you can find out about it on the internet, which is a little bit strange because this airport does look very interesting, especially if you look at the cliff down here. Now, this airport is called Alpe de Juez. Sounds almost Spanish, doesn't it? Like the Juez. I don't know. I'm getting sidetracked again. Now, the town of Alpe de Juez or whatever is over here and the Alteport serving it is here. Now, something special about this one is the sloped runway. It is almost as bad as Courchevel. In fact, it might even be a little bit worse, especially because this runway is even a little bit shorter than Courchevel's runway. This is only around 500 meters long, so you really do not want to mess at this place. Definitely not. This kind of slope does help gaining speed on takeoff, and you will really need speed here because otherwise... Yeah, this is really not a very comfortable place to fly at. Then we are spawned into a Cessna 172. That shouldn't have any issues here at all. Now, the elevation of this airport is 1,800 meters or 6,000 feet. That is pretty damn high. Oh, wow. Okay, that was a pretty good takeoff. Even though the slope was very, very strange. That was really not the most comfortable takeoff I have ever done. But the actual challenge begins when you try to land here. Let's actually go for the Cirrus jet. Yeah, that seems like a good option. Now, this airport is an Alta port, which means that you have to have a very specific license to even land and take off here. It's called a mountain wheeling license. And if you have that mountain wheeling license, you can operate at places like Courchevel and also... Who is? I really don't like that name. I'm pretty sure someone from America is not able to pronounce that name properly. Okay. Now, landings here are not soft. Ouch. By the way, there was no scenery pack for this airport for the flight simulator. So I kind of built myself one. For example, I added the runway markings and all. And actually, I added a 737 too. Very accurate plane. You see the 737 operate here a lot. Now, that was actually a very successful landing. I mean, otherwise, it would have been quite weird. But this landing was definitely on the firm side too. Boom. But a stop is a stop, so you have to count that. Actually, there are quite a few hangars here and some space for planes. But Courchevel Airport is actually a little bit bigger than this one. So this is a little bit more dangerous. Now, let's try a plane that should obviously be able to operate here. And that is the Twin Otter. Yeah, we've been talking about this plane a lot on this channel. For all the new people here, basically, it's a very extreme plane that can operate on pretty much any runway, really. Doesn't matter. Yeah, this runway is really only 450 meters long. The shortest commercial runway is 303 meters long, just for perspective. So this is actually pretty close. All right, let's do this. All right, that was pretty damn successful. No worries about that, actually. Boom. So what plane can we try next is the question. I mean, since we're in the Alps, we can try out a plane that is also from the Alps, and that is the Pilatus PC-24. I mean, why not? Let's try taking that one off this time around. Yes, welcome aboard the Pilatus PC-24. Um, I feel very nervous. I mean, we're actually talking private jets now. So, uh, I don't know. Let's just do it. Are you okay, co-pilot? Pretty sure she or he is. I don't know. Is that a lady or a man? I don't... Uh, it doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and take off. Full power. As I've already said a hundred times on this channel before, this plane is extremely versatile. But is it really? Let's find out. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh. Grass. All right. You know what? That was actually not super bad. Was not super good either, but we are alive and we're stably flying, which is pretty impressive. Did we touch the grass area, though? That's the question. And we kind of did. I mean, this plane is certified to operate on grass anyway, so what's the matter even? That was okay still. Uh, so I'm not sure. 
Let's try a bigger private jet. Yes, let's do the Challenger 300. Yeah, this Canadian private jet is quite a different story. It is a little bit bigger and it does need a longer runway. Let's land it. Yeah, welcome aboard the Challenger 300. So I hope this airport is the last Alpine airport that we have to visit, but there are just so many airfields in the Alpine mountains. It's actually crazy. Okay, let's do this now. All right, this is gonna be a, a slam of a landing. Oh, damn. Okay, that didn't work out, did it? Ouch. Yeah, that was really not the smoothest landing, you can say that. And we didn't even stop in time, so... I mean, in real life, this probably would have damaged the plane. I mean, if you overrun on a landing, I don't think it's that bad, because there is really only grass in front of the runway. Yeah, no, this was not a successful landing, definitely not. <laughs> Let's actually try touching down earlier this time around. We were quite a bit late last time. Oh... Nope, impossible. Yeah, you know what? Let's forget about this plane. Let's try something like the 737. The 737 always surprises me with its short field landing abilities. Yeah, these Bombardier planes, they tend to use more runway, actually. So let's try the 737. I'm pretty sure this is not gonna work out, but <laughs> anyway. All right, welcome aboard the 737. Was I able to land the 737 at Courchevel? I don't think I was. So this will not work out either, will it? All right, landing gear, prepare for a hard landing. Oof. Okay, that was a perfectly fine landing, actually. I mean, yes, I have to say, um, I landed a little bit before the runway actually started. I mean, technically, you could expand this asphalt runway a little bit because there's this unused grass area. So maybe a 737 could operate here. I mean, there's a 737 standing right here. I think this can enter commercial service here, right? And there's this hot air balloon very much next to the runway. I don't feel comfortable about that. There are some people waving. Oh my goodness. Someone is actually falling off. Well then, have fun, I guess. Someone is actually hanging from that. Doesn't matter. Now that was surprisingly okay, but the thing is, does it make sense to go any bigger? I think it does. Let's try the 777. Uh, maybe a takeoff will work. You know, we have this very huge cliff there, and we can just fall down there and gain some lift and speed, and maybe enter a stable flight after the takeoff. Maybe this can be successful, but what are the odds of it being actually successful? Well, it's not looking too good. Maybe let's use some more of the runway, because at this point, every inch is significant. All right, let's go full power now and see how this works. Not very smart. Okay, now we are overshooting the runway and down the cliff. Uh-oh, no, the plane is not pulling up. All right, that was very dangerously close to the mountain, but we are actually flying now. That is very impressive, actually. Not bad. <laughs> I expected a little bit worse. And down the cliff. All right, yeah, this was actually not bad. Really good. So what can we try next? How about a 747? Let's actually take this one off again. Landing is not even at all possible here, but taking off might work. That is the thing. All right, welcome aboard Lufthansa 747. There is a hot air balloon causing wake turbulence. Actually, that simulation is not real. Real hot air balloons go Mach 4, as we have learned at FSX. Let's go ahead and take a huff, or at least try to do that. All right, we're going full power. Oh my goodness. Down the cliff. Oh, not that far down, not that far down. Oh no. Yeah, this is not working. Oh no. While the 777 worked a little bit, the 747 didn't do that. I mean, the 747 is quite a bit larger. So yeah, this didn't work out at all. Just falling down. <laughs> Let's actually try finding the biggest plane that can both land and take off here. That is actually a pretty nice challenge, isn't it? Maybe let's try the C-130 as well. The C-130 is also a very, very versatile plane, just like the Pilatus PC-24. I mean, this is a military plane that can operate even on aircraft carriers, which is a little bit crazy. But is it able to operate at this airport? Let's find out. I mean, the odds are 50 by 50. You know, either we crash or we don't crash. So this will work out, I guess. Maybe this can be the biggest plane to operate at this runway. All right, 110 knots. Looking pretty good. Oh, not looking good. Yeah, I can imagine that this happens a lot. Let's try this one again. <laughs> The C-130, it is pretty damn solid, so it definitely can handle a landing like this. And we stopped? We did stop. That is actually pretty crazy. Apart from this very, very, very bad landing. I don't know what went wrong there. Oh my goodness. Ouch. We did actually end up stopping. That was pretty damn nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can do a smooth landing as well. <laughs> 
well, that was probably not a smooth landing, but it was successful nonetheless. That was actually pretty good. So I think we have found it. The biggest plane to operate here is the C-130. It is actually quite large if you compare it to the 737. It can operate at some very nice places. Boom. That was actually right on the runway. That was okay. So that was good. Taking off also works. So let's go ahead and take this plane off, I guess. Oh, very big tail strike. But okay. Yeah, that was fine enough. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.